Hi, I'm Annie Botticelli, and this is the Storyteller Forecast for Sagittarius for September 2013. So if Sag is your sun sign or Sag is your rising sign, then this is for you. If you're interested in a personal reading, then go to my website, AnnieHelpsYou.com. Also, I have a new, free, kick-ass newsletter. So if you want a little bit of Annie in your inbox, motivation, inspiration, enthusiasm, resources, tools, techniques to empower you to be your best, then definitely sign up for the free newsletter, which is on my welcome page at AnnieHelpsYou.com. So, what's up for Saggies? This, um, I'm always really excited to do the Sag forecast because I'm a Sagittarius also. And um, I am, I don't know, I guess I'm just excitable by nature. So, I'm excited by everything. So, what is going on for us, though? The first thing that I'm thinking about is the sun is moving into our 10th house. The sun takes a year to go around the full circle of the zodiac signs, and it spends a month in each sign. So the entire month of September is going to be spent having our career, work, life purpose house lit up like the 4th of July by the sun. Pretty exciting. Many of us will be getting recognition that we were expecting. Many that you're not expecting it may come to you and in any case often with recognition comes responsibility and this is where saggies can cringe a little bit because unless you have some importantly placed earth signs if you have some borderline capricorn or whatever in general sages don't really love commitment <laughs> and you could be a very committed person who's a sagittarius but the sagittarius part of you is the part of you that bucks up against any kind of commitment or having to follow through with things or having to be on someone else's schedule or responsibility. Um, of course, you know that I'm not pigeonholing you into, you know, that Sages aren't responsible or whatever. I'm, a, I'm very responsible. I show up for everyone and everything, and I know that many of you do too. But I also know that sometimes that's a stretch for me <laughs> and that that Sag part of me, having nine placements in Sagittarius like I do, it's very difficult with this expansive way of being sometimes to drill us down into a time or a schedule or a date or um, any anything certain. So just to give you the fair warning that, and you probably know that part of why you might have um, sabotaged your success, which Sages tend to do, is because you didn't want the responsibility that came along with it. But very likely the recognition is coming. Just want to let you know so you can be aware that it'll be time to step into it. Many of you will be ready for that, and the rest of you will, will adjust. The Mercury transit through the 10th house is going to add even more energy to this career, work, and life purpose. Um, oh, also wanted to mention that when the sun moves through the 12th house, sometimes we can have a renewed sense of purpose in our work, which is really exciting. So if you're doing something that you love, you might have a new zest for it. If you're doing something that you don't love, you may have a new level of hope that you are on a path into something that you love more. And maybe some opportunities could come with this transit as well. So Mercury um, spending time in the 10th house will make you very focused on business stuff. And this is a really great thing. The fact that the Sun and Mercury are there through all or most of, well, Mercury will be there for part of September and the Sun will be there for about all of September, is really great timing. And the reason why is because September is the last month without a, a retrograde planet from which will happen from October through like July. We're going to have a series of time from October 2013 through July 2014 where there's going to be at least one planet that's retrograde with the overlapping shadows of other retrograde planets falling in to happen at the same time as some of the retrogrades. When when the way that I think of retrograde planets, and the ones I'm talking about are Mercury, Venus, and Mars, because those are the only personal planets that go retrograde, um, is that in life we sweep things under the rug. And in retrograde planets, somebody comes and takes the rugs, and all of the things we swept under them are just swirling around everywhere. So it gets dirty, it gets dusty, we get lost in the sweepings. Sometimes that's a good thing. Sometimes something comes back from the past that um, is a delightful thing to come back, a welcome thing. Many times they're the things that we avoided. That's why we swept them under the rug to begin with. So September is the last month for a really long time. It's going to feel like a really long time that we are free from the energy of those sweepings. 
So it's really good that the business focus is so strong for Sagittarius because the more things you can do with your business this month, you'll be so glad that you did because it's going to be time for backtracking and redoing and reconsidering and revamping over the next months. But if you have launched things, then you have something to redo and revamp. So if your timeline was to launch something October, November, or God forbid, December, or January, the reason why I say that is because Venus is going to be going retrograde and it is the worst time to start a business. So if you were going to open a business with the new year, sounds like a fun thing that people do. Don't do it. Please don't do it. There are always caveats to this and there are always, you know, maybe it's an old business that you're reopening and sometimes Venus retrograde, you know, can support that. And, you know, there are always caveats to what I'm saying. And so without seeing your individual chart, I really can't make a blanketed approach. But since I'm talking to so many people and trying to help as many people as possible, definitely consult with an astrologer about this to see if you're in one of those caveat situations. But if you're not, don't open your business when Venus is in retrograde. It's like the kiss of death for a new business. I've done it myself. I knew better. It's been a long time, but I still knew better even back then. I did it anyway. I lost a bunch of money. And I want to save you from doing the same thing. So if you were going to open your business in January, if there's any way you can squish your timeline to happen in September, or at least have legal documents, you know, LLCs, um, official opening, and then, you know, kind of going back in and redoing stuff, then do it the best that you can. I, I know without knowing your specific situation, your specific business, it's really hard to advise in the best way, but... I just want you to know that. Um, okay, let's see what else is going on. Mars is going to be in your ninth house, and it will be there for all of September and all of October. Mars brings energy. The ninth house is the house that is ruled by Sagittarius. So this is um, an extra special transit for Sagittarius, and it can make you feel rambunctious. It can make you feel like adventure, and you probably already feel that way, but it might be very hard for you to settle down into something in September and even into October. November, you might have an easier time. You'll see what I mean. Um, maybe you're starting a new school, school program. So in that case, maybe you'll get settled into the school program, but within that, you have a new adventure. Um, or maybe you'll get settled into um, a teaching arrangement because the ninth house definitely rules teaching. But you'll see what I'm saying. Within whatever you're settling into, there's going to be a lot of activity and a lot of um, freshness and energy to teaching, learning, traveling, um, expanding consciousness, adventure, um, and breaking molds. See what else is going on. Venus is still going to be transiting through the 11th house. So many of um, you, many of us, are going to be spending nice time with friends, which I'm going to be in Florida. Um, which is where I moved to Sedona from, and so I'm going to be seeing my friends during that time, and it's very common when someone has Venus transiting through their 11th house of friends that there is a harmony, um, a fun, a camaraderie uh, with friends. So many of you will be getting back together with old friends, meeting new friends. It's a good time to be circulating um, because Venus also rules love and money. So if you're single and you don't want to be single, then friends may hook you up. So just pay attention if you have a friend that's been kind of nudging you to meet somebody. Um, September would be a good time. And even if you're listening to this in August, it's, it's in there right now. Um, so think about that. 11th house also rules the Internet. So you could find love through the Internet during that transit. Um, and you can also make money through the Internet. So if your business already is involving the Internet, you may have a boost with this focus um, on the 10th house that I talked about. And Internet may and likely will be involved. Um, friends, acquaintances, groups, teams, organizations, internet. Those are a, a lot of things that are ruled by um, your 11th house. So Venus is moving through there and take full advantage of that. Some other steps to talk about. Um, the eclipses are going to be sparking up their energy, as you may remember from last eclipse season or the eclipse season before, if you've been following my videos all that time. Um, eclipses bring awesome or debilitating changes, <laughs> sometimes both. And some people go through eclipses and nothing really happens for them, more commonly, because there are going to be the people who are directly affected, and that's going to be depending on their personal planets in their chart, the aspects that the um, eclipses are making to their personal planets. Those people that have aspects or, or direct hits, angles, from the eclipses are going to be the ones that 
are affected. The other people are going to be the ones helping the people that are affected. So that's, eclipses are pretty much broken down into two categories. The people who are getting rocked in their charts by these exact placements, depending on where the eclipses are hitting, and the people who are helping the people. <laughs> so whether you're a helper or whether you're a person being affected, then try to remember that even if, if there's something that's really challenging that goes on, that there is going to be something great that comes from it. Um, there are going to be deaths. There are going to be births. There are going to be endings and closures of things. Some people will be ready for those endings and want those endings, and some people won't be. But there will be breakups. There will be new relationships. There are going to be people finding out they're pregnant. There's going to be so much major change that goes on. And um, so if you're finding that nothing's happening, then just look for the place for you. Then look for the places where you can assist people who are getting totally rocked by, by these. And the reason I'm talking about them now, even though they don't start until October 18th, um, the series of two, is because there's a shadow period for eclipses as well. So definitely six, sometimes eight weeks ahead of time. So that could even bring us into the end of August, the eight weeks from October 18th. But definitely all of September, very fair game for eclipse news. Um, We'll talk much more about the eclipses in the October horoscope. Um, but I just wanted to give you a heads up in case those changes start happening. Another way that astrologers look at eclipses is they, are, they, they uh, make corrections. So if you're heading on a certain track and then something very extreme happens to you, it jostles you sufficiently and puts you on a different track. That track that you get put on um, is generally going to lead to a better one, even if it doesn't feel like that at first. So do your best to try to look for what that better trajectory is, you know, and, and come out of whatever it is with, um, you know, a fierce knowing that, um, that there's something for you at the end of this path, no matter how hard it is. And maybe it will just be very obvious because the change is, 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 the change is so good that you can already see it. Um, so I can't see everything going on in your chart. I would like very much to. If you're interested in having a personal reading with me, go to AnnieHelpsYou.com and um, check out my personal coaching. Also, definitely sign up for my newsletter. All things very saggy. The newsletter tone will be very saggy because I'm very saggy. Um, inspiring, motivating, um, mind expanding, and um, will connect you with awesome resources and tools and techniques. So sign up for that. Also, if you are interested in mystical tarot, I do not do tarot myself, but my favorite Scorpio does tarot. You can look at the Mystical Tarot tab on my um, website, and you can check out more about that. So I hope you have a fantastic September.